to uh, the strain. You've seen both sides of vampires. So yeah. Can you talk a little bit about going from such opposite ends of the spectrum? Well, you know, I've been asked this question many times while doing press, and to me, there's such different projects. I don't even think there's a connection between them. You know, this is a Guillermo del Toro show. Our monsters are brutal. They're quite uh, unique because Guillermo, you know, designed them. So it's actually its own beast. And uh, we have nothing. I think we're actually going completely against the, the 18th or 19th romantic, you know, um, idea of vampires and that that's what twilight is so um yeah to me they have no connection whatsoever <laughs> what was the first um Guillermo film that you remember seeing that and what was it about it that attracted your you know imagination to this project you remember feeling a connection to yeah, storytelling or it was i think it was pan's labyrinth and uh of course there's the connection of you know these incredible creatures that he animates and there's nothing like you've ever seen, and, and we have that with our master as well. What attracted you to this character of Nora? Um, what was it about her that really uh, spoke to you? Her humanity, and also how she has the sixth sense of things and perceives things differently from all the men around her, and how she's uh, extremely tough, but at the same time is able to keep her femininity in it all. So. Um, Yes, because she's the one that pushes F to go and talk to Abraham. Yeah, she she's does. Like, There's something there. There's something. She, she, it's not logical. Nothing make, makes you know any sense whatsoever. It's this crazy older man with a sword, and but there's something about him that just you know keeps on calling her, and, and she and she goes for it. You know, she's she's also an investigator, so she has that you know, when, uh, both F and Nora are virus hunters, and you do have. You need to have the kind of like a detective kind of mind to, you know, be able to trace viruses and stuff. And I think she knows that the tracking may have a lead, you know, for them. Okay. So she can react when she actually has to face one of these vampires. Um, well, we we see that in episode three, and it's pretty shocking. And they have no idea what's going on, and they're perplexed, and there's a lot of confusion. And we'll see that throughout, like the you know, episode three, four, five, six, uh, until the reality of it all just sinks in, and then she'll have to make a decision on, on you know, the path that she wants to take. Well, does she feel like crossing this is an infected person and I need to treat them, or does she cross you have like every biological creature that I had to Her first reaction is to treat them, of course. She's a doctor, she's a biochemist, she works for the CDC, you know, the government hired her in order to save, you know, humanity. And contain viruses and, and you know whatever you know um, is um, threatening our society. So of course that's what she's gonna do first. And then little by little she'll she'll have to change her mind because this is nothing they ever faced, and this is a, this is a new order in, in the world. This is scary material. When you see scary movies, are you super cool or are you the first one under the seat behind it? I don't watch scary movies because I don't do well with them at all. <laughs> So, yeah, um, it's even hard sometimes for me to watch certain episodes. I try to watch them, you know, during the daylight. <laughs> and then have, like, do something, like, really funny between, like, yeah. the episode and going to bed. Like, have so. South Park really often. It's just yeah, South Park is, a, you know, The Simpsons as well. It's, like, really good, yeah. Well, it's very different when we when we film it. We don't have any of the special effects, so it, it it's it's a surprise for us when we see the final product as well. You know, yeah, and most of the monsters and and uh, it's you know it's post it's post production work and how amazing are you know the guys doing the post production? It's such an incredible. Um, you know, we have such incredible effects for television. I think that's what, you know, distant our show from other shows on television. Speaking of the final product, and is there something that you were surprised about when you saw it come to life on screen? Yeah, I mean, there's so many other characters, for example, um, Gus, you know, that uh, I'm normally filming with, with Corey and with Sean and, um, you know, a little bit with Kevin because our characters end up meeting, you know, towards the end of the season and of course with, with Dave, the beautiful David Bradley, but we never, you know, Miguel playing Gus, he's doing his own movie, so we, we have this, you know, joke going, I was like, oh, Gus is, Gus is like today, like, you know, 
we're all like having dinner because it's our day off and then Miguel is working. It's like, I wonder what he's doing. So um, it's a nice surprise. First, he's fantastic. And second, just to, you know, just to see what, you know, that part of the story is going and how it's developing. Because, you know, we do follow the book, but it's quite different from the book. So you just never know how, you know, actors are gonna embody these characters and yeah so I, I always look forward to to guess the scenes